Okay, so today we're really diving deep. Deep, yeah. Into a topic that's, I mean, it's pretty crucial, especially if you're working in, say, emergency medicine, critical care, neurology. Yeah. You know. High stakes for sure. Absolutely. So we're talking about increased intracranial pressure, ICP. Right. And we found this awesome guide. It's concise, straight to the point. Ten key points on managing ICP. Ten, yeah, that's it. And we thought, let's break these down one by one. Yeah. Point number one, the guide really stresses this. Recognizing the red flags. Uh-huh. You know, like, how do we know? Right off the bat. Yeah. Right away that something's up. It's like time is brain. Exactly. You got to catch it early. So what are we looking for? Okay, so those classic signs, you know, headache, nausea, vomiting. Okay, those are the big ones. Those are the big ones, yeah. But I feel like there's more to it. Oh, absolutely. You got to be super vigilant looking for even the smallest changes, like a drop in their GCS score. GCS, Tolma scale, yeah. Right, right, of course. Even a couple of points can be significant. And then any new SOCAL neurological deficits, those are crucial red flags too. Now, when you say focal neurological deficits, could you, for our listeners who maybe aren't, you know, dealing with this every day, could you give us like a... A A quick rundown. Yeah, exactly. Basically, it means there's some specific area of the brain that's not working as it should. Mm -hmm. So you might see, I don't know, sudden weakness in an arm or leg. Maybe their speech gets slurred, stuff like that. So it's like localized. Localized, exactly. It can give you clues about where the pressure might be building. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we've got the red flags, the warning signs. Right. Now... Point two talks about, he uses this analogy of like detective work. Oh, I like that. It's like we got to find the culprit, right? Yeah. Got to figure out what's causing that pressure to increase. Exactly. So what are some of the usual suspects? Okay. So traumatic brain injury. That's a big one. Obviously. Yeah. Then you've got hemorrhages, you know, bleeding in the brain, Uh. brain tumors. Those can definitely cause problems. And then infections like meningitis or encephalitis. So basically anything that's going to take up extra space in the skull. Exactly. And this is where imaging comes in, CT scans, MRIs. Those are our best tools for figuring out what we're dealing with. So we can get that. The roadmap. The roadmap. To guide our treatment. Exactly. All right. Point number three. This one I thought was interesting. Focuses on positioning. Positioning. The patient. It seems simple. Yeah. But it makes a huge difference. Why is that? Well, you got to remember, gravity is always at play. Right. So if we elevate the head of the bed, say, to about 30 degrees. Okay. That helps to promote venous drainage, you know, helps that blood flow out of the head. Uh So it's like easing traffic. Exactly. Like easing that traffic jam in the brain. And we also got to make sure their neck isn't bent or twisted in a way that's restricting blood flow. So no kinks in the hose, basically. No kinks in the hose, yeah. Got it. All right, let's talk ventilation. Point number four. Yeah, breathing. That's crucial, obviously. But it's not always as straightforward as just, you know, making sure they're breathing right. Right, because there's this thing called hyperventilation, Uh which basically means we increase their respiratory rate. And that can temporarily lower ICP by constricting blood vessels. Okay, so it's like squeezing the hose a little bit. Yeah, exactly. But, and this is a big but, if we squeeze too hard... Or for too long. To cut off the flow. To cut off the flow. Yeah. And that can actually lead to ischemia, you know, not enough blood getting to the brain. So it's a balancing act. We got to find that sweet spot. The Goldilocks zone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Point five, fluid management. This yeah. seems, I mean, it seems pretty basic. It is fundamental. Yeah, but why is it so crucial in ICP management? Okay, think of the brain like a sponge, right? Okay. If it's too dry, it can't function properly. But if it's too soaked, it swells up, Mm -hmm. and that increases the pressure. So we got to strike that balance. So how do we do that? So typically we use isotonic fluids, and we monitor their intake and output, you know, like hawks. Got to stay on top of it. Absolutely. And sometimes if we need to really pull fluid out of the brain, we use what's called hyperosmolar therapy. Oh, yeah, like mannitol. Mannitol, exactly. It's like a super absorbent towel for the brain. It draws that excess fluid out. That's a great analogy. It works wonders. Actually, I remember this one case, this young guy. Wait, story? Yeah. Motorcycle accident, severe head injury. His ICP was just through the roof. Oh, no. Despite everything we were doing. And then we gave him mannitol. And within hours, his pressure started to come down. Wow. He ended up making a full recovery. It was amazing. That's incredible. Okay. So that's point five, fluid management. Mm -hmm. Point six, the guy talks about our pharmacological arsenal. Our weapons against ICP, right? Yeah, exactly. So besides mannitol, what else do we have? 
Well, corticosteroids are really important, especially when inflammation is a major factor, you know, like with cerebral edema caused by tumor. They help calm things down. Yeah, they're like the peacemakers. I like that. All right, point seven, real-time insights, ICP monitoring. Got to keep an eye on those pressure fluctuations. So how we do that? Well, invasive monitoring is the gold standard. We use these things called intraventricular catheters. Right. They're placed directly into the brain. Wow. And they give us constant readings of the pressure so we can see even the tiniest spikes and respond immediately. That's pretty amazing. So point number eight, this is kind of the, I guess, the last resort. Yeah, when medical management just isn't enough. We got to go surgical. Exactly. Decompressive craniectomy, that's a big one. We basically remove a part of the skull to give the swollen brain more space. It's like creating a pressure release valve. Exactly. And there are other surgical options too, like removing a hematoma or a tumor, depending on the cause of the ICP. It's incredible what they can do these days. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Okay. So we're nearing the end here. Point nine. This one really stood out to me. The power of teamwork. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. This isn't a solo mission, right? Not at all. It takes a whole team to manage ICP effectively. Neurosurgeons, intensivists, nurses, rehab specialists, everyone has to be on the same page. Working together. Yeah, communicating constantly, especially during those interdisciplinary rounds. That's where we really fine tune the treatment plan. And make sure everyone's on board. Exactly. All right, last but not least, point 10. This one's all about empowering families through knowledge. Right. We can't forget the human side of this. Absolutely. These families are going through a lot. They need clear, honest information about what's happening, what the options are, what the possible outcomes are. It's about giving them the tools. To make informed decisions. Yeah, and to feel like they're part of the process. Exactly. It makes a huge difference for everyone involved. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Mm. But you know what I keep coming back to is how, I don't know, how seemingly simple things. Like positioning. Yeah, positioning, fluid management. It's the basics. Yeah. They can have such a huge impact on ICP and okay. ultimately on patient outcomes. It's true. And that's what makes this field so fascinating, right? That's powerful stuff. And that's a great note to end on. So, listener... As you think about these 10 points, what resonates with you? How can you take this knowledge and use it to elevate your own practice? Mm. Make a real difference for your patients. Think about it. Thanks for joining us for the deep dive. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.